Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hey, everyone. My name's Sean. I'm an alcoholic, and I'm also a drug addict, and um, since it's after hours, I'll probably discuss that just a little bit. Uh, this is How It Works at Work. I'd like to thank the uh, workshop committee for uh, asking me to do this. It's an honor to be of service here. It's been a great weekend. I've enjoyed all the speakers. Uh, Lyle tonight was just incredible and uh, really rejuvenated me. I'd like to start out by uh, kind of qualifying myself real briefly, let you know uh, how I got this honorable position to, to be at The Rock speaking. Um, and you might wonder, I'm, I'm 30 years old. I got sober in 1997 when I was just shy of being 25. Um, my drinking career lasted about 10 years. In that time, I uh, went through 15 different treatment centers. I was facing five years prison. Um, I've been unemployed for about three years. I was uh, uh, drinking every single day for weeks at a time, blackout drinker. I was also addicted to cocaine and uh, shooting intravenous morphine. And uh, by the grace of God, uh, I no longer have to live that way. Uh, I was actually uh, fortunate enough before my disease got real bad to get into uh, the field of nursing. I was actually went to college, University of Georgia, go dogs. Um, in 1990, to be a, a physician, started out. And uh, my drinking by then was already getting progressively worse with each quarter. So I went from being a physician, I was going to be a, a nurse anesthetist. That's a specialty nurse uh, administering anesthesia, which makes perfect sense for a drunk and a drug addict. And um, then after it continued to get worse, I decided I'd just be a, uh, just be a reg- regular nurse, registered nurse. And um, due to my disease and addiction, I, I lost the right to do that for, for quite some time. Um, that's enough about my disease. Qualify myself. Uh, basically, like I said, I got sober in 1997 through the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, the steps, and having a competent sponsor. Um, after I got sober, I uh, began to work on getting my, my nursing license back. And with, uh, as Lyle spoke tonight, amazing things happen once you get sober and start working the steps. I did get my license back um, after almost being a felon, after having the state and DEA come down on me. I got my license back, and I went into a home health profession where uh, I excelled by applying the principles of the program and uh, went from being a case manager to a case manager supervisor to a case manager manager to a regional manager of a home health care company within a two-year span and uh, had about 45 people underneath me in my department and it was about a 35, 40 million dollar a year company. Um, I decided that um, I wanted to be my own boss after a couple of years of that and in uh, 2000 I moved away from the Atlanta area, which I had uh, gotten involved with a bunch of people in AA and CA and got involved in the Atlanta Men's Workshop, and moved down to St. Simons, where I decided to get back into a business that I was uh, in and out of in college, and that was the restaurant business, and I opened up a restaurant and bar with three and a half years sober. Um, so I am a restaurant and a bar owner, and that's one reason why I've been chosen uh, to do this. I work about 60 hours a week in a deli and pub. Um, I have at my disposal about anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000 worth of alcohol uh, at any given time. And uh, that's from a person that used to could not go a single day without drinking or drugging. That's from a person who uh, was being detoxed in the medical hospital one time. As soon as they unplugged the, the IV, I snuck off to the library, scaled up the wall through the ceiling down into the pharmacy and was trying to break into the, the, uh, the pharmacy when uh, the nurse came in, and I was, she was more shocked than I was. Uh, so basically, I had a pretty malignant case of uh, alcoholism and drug addiction, and today I recoil from it like a hot flame. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about how I got from, from there to here. Um, and basically, it's very simple. It talks about in the 12th step, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to the alcoholic who still suffers and practice these principles in all our affairs. Uh, to me, that means not only in my affairs in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous or here the weekend of the workshop, but also at my place of business and at my home. 
Uh, it's a very simple concept. Uh, on page 14, I'm going to go refer to the big book a little bit. On page 14 in Bill's story, it says, he's talking about his conversation with Ebby Thatcher. He says, my friend had emphasized the absolute necessity of demonstrating these principles in all my affairs. Then it goes on page 19, there is a solution. It says, we feel that elimination of our drinking is but a beginning. A much more important demonstration of our principles lies before us in our respective homes, occupations, and affairs. On page 83, it says, spiritual life is not a theory. We have to live it. Then on page 86, the last paragraph, it says, we may face indecision. However, we ask for God's inspiration, we relax and take it easy. We constantly remind ourselves we are no longer running the show. Thy will be done. So, one of the most challenging things that I, that I face today as, um, as a business owner, being an employer, is, um, is dealing with the, the people that I, that I have to manage. And uh, sometimes that can be very challenging, dealing with trying to incorporate the principles of the program with people that, uh, that have no idea about the program or the principles that are behind it. But it's almost like when you're making those, those amends to somebody, it's, it's really, it has nothing to do with how they take it. I've got to be steadfast and then follow my, my principles. And uh, sometimes they understand and sometimes they don't. Um, when I think about the principles that I try to incorporate on a daily basis, and, and obviously I, I sometimes do fall short, uh, the keys, and it's basically the principles that are behind the steps, honesty. I try to be honest and forthright with, with my employees. Um, humble. I try to realize that you know I, I can't do it by myself. You know, no matter how much my ego wants to tell me that I'm that I'm the man. The bottom line is I can't do everything. That I am somewhat dependent upon these people. Um, open-mindedness. That's something that's very important. Uh, not only in my position currently, but also when I was an employee. And this this is vice versa. And speaking as both being an employee and being an employer. Um, willingness. Willingness to to um, take on suggestions, integrity, uh, saying what I mean and meaning what I say, perseverance, faith, and tolerance. Tolerance of, of other people's ideas and, and their situations that they're in. Um, some other things that are very important to me um, that I try to do is being punctual. I know when I was uh, actively drinking and drugging, I, I never thought the rules applied to me. And oddly enough, they did. And and I found that, you know, I have no right to not be on time. I have no right to not have a, a positive attitude. And so today I practice. I try to be try to be places on time. I try to have a positive attitude. And I, I believe and I try to share this with my employees that, you know, if you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. Um and I found that incorporating the steps really has, has helped me in, in, in just about every single uh, circumstance I've been in with business. Um, early on, it was very simple, you know, just trying to get there on time, having a positive attitude, being willing to do what my employer asked of me. And, um, and, and you find that people really respect that and they appreciate that. I know for me... Uh, now, on the other side, an employee that comes in, has a positive attitude, is, is accountable and dependable, that is not uh, constantly trying to stir the waters, is such a valuable member to me. Um, and in this day and age, it, it's and having uh, trustworthy, confident people to work with uh, is, is sometimes very difficult, and it's fine, it's uh, very important. Um, so with that, it's pretty brief, but that was my, my part. We're going to let Larry talk, and uh, then we'll open up for some discussion. Hey, family, my name is Larry Richard. I'm a recovering alcoholic. All my friends call me Doc. And when I tell you I'm an alcoholic, you can believe that, because I am an alcoholic. I don't have to qualify. Well, you know, I'm a drunk. Plain and simple, you know, and uh, 
and, and just like most other drunks, you know, I, I lived the life of a drunk and, and I drank to use and used to live and, and all that good stuff, you know. But that's not why we're here tonight. We're here to talk about how these steps and, and how the principles that we have in our program, how can we apply them in the workplace? Uh, i tell you about me. Um, I've been in the automobile business for the last 20 years. I'm a car salesman. I'm a used car salesman. So if there's any place where you need to practice principles, is on a used car lot, on somebody's car lot. <laughs> you know, I was in a meeting the other day. The guy told me, he says, hey, I had just went to this meeting for the first time. The guy says, well, you need to keep coming back because you're going to be the first honest car salesman I've seen in all my days. And I'm just dying to meet one. <laughs> And I mean, you know, and that's kind of like how public opinion is and how folks think about it, you know. But what I do on my work, and, and, and I just try to practice the principles. You know, my sponsor told me that, you know, you have something that nobody else has. So you have 12 steps, 12 traditions, 12 promises, and 12 concepts. And, and the rest of the world don't have that. You know, and then he also gave me four other spiritual principles that I try to, try to use. And, and that's tolerance, patience. Love and purity. You know, and I got that from my great grand sponsor who, who's no longer with us. But, uh, uh, but I try to apply those principles into my life and, and, and into my working situation. And sometimes it's a tough thing to do. You know, while I've been in the car business, I've, I've had a lot of particular positions and a lot of jobs. Yeah, I started out on the, on the front line selling cars from day to day. I, uh, um, I got into the car business as a work-study student over in Birmingham. I was a student at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Go Blazers. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, 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 and the guy, one of my deans, I was majoring in marketing, and one of my deans just thought that I would be a good car salesman. You know, I didn't have no idea that, you know, what it was all amount to. But, but anyway, I went in. And, uh, and I worked there and, and I sold cars and, and I did it good. You know, it was just like the same thing we go through with alcoholism, you know, it was one of, it was one of those quick fixes, you know, it's the only industry I know where you can be a bum one day and rich the next, <laughs> you know, and, and, and for me to take that and to work with it and, and, and try to apply these principles in it and to integrate what I've learned in here and use it out there, it has been, uh, it has been very fascinating. It has, it has been very fascinating. And I'm very, very grateful to this fellowship because, and, and to my sponsor, and, and, and not only my sponsor, but a lot of other people that I come into contact on a day-to-day -day basis because they, they have shown me how to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. You know, I've hired a lot of people uh, through my career. I came from a salesman. I've been finance manager, sales manager. Uh, 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 general sales manager, uh, been a dealer school, a lot of, all came real close, came that close, I mean that close to having my own dealership. You know, and, 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 and then the whole rug was pulled out from under me and I fell on my face and y'all came and put your arms around me and I got back up. The whole deal is, is how do we deal with that? How do we deal with our successes and how do we deal with our failures? And there's one thing, like Lyle was talking about a little long, earlier ago, and that's the spiritual principles. You know, we, we, that's the only thing that we can hold on to, is our spiritual principles. Um, the spiritual principle of honesty. You know, and, and, and you say, well, how can a car salesman practice the spiritual principle of honesty? You know, you just don't lie. You know, you just don't lie. You know, and, and, and a lot of people look at me and they say, well, how can you sell cars and not lie? Well, I just don't tell the whole story. <laughs> no, I'm not just joking. <laughs> I was just waiting to see when you woke up out there. <laughs> no, no. You know, you know when, when, I get, when I have customers come in, the only thing that I can do is, is, is to just to tell them and to share with them what I have. You know, I mean, I have something that they want, and they have something that I want. And, and we come together and we have a mutual exchange. And in order for that, for that transition to take place, it is not necessary for me to lie to them. It is not necessary for me to cheat anyone. People talk about, uh, um, what, well, how can you, how can you charge people, you know, all this money for, for, for something? And, and, and in the society that we live in, you know, it's like buyers beware. 
You know, I mean, there is there is a point of my responsibility, and there is a point of their responsibility, and those two responsibilities have to come together. And and I only have so much responsibility. You know, what my responsibility is is to provide you the great, the best service that I possibly can, to not to lie to you, to not to to uh, to, to misrepresent my product, my company, or 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 the people that I work for. And and that's a real serious thing, and I take it real serious. You know, I, I really do. Um, I've had people come in and tell me all kinds of stories about, you know, their trade-in and their cars, and I say, all right, okay, buddy, you know, here we go. Here we go. But that's okay. But that's okay. Uh, another principle that I have to apply to the business is acceptance. Um, you know, when I got into, first started getting into management, uh, I began to hire people. And, and I would, and, and a lot of us would come in. You know, and, and I get the, the, the opportunity to share my experience, strength, and hope with, with people that, that, that just, just don't have a clue. Just don't have a clue. And that's okay. You know, because I think that that's why God placed me in that position in the first place. That's what I'm there for. You know, um, I have had situations to come up that, that, uh, um, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like mind boggling. I was like, well, why did you do that? And then it dawns on me, says, oh yeah, I forgot, he's a drunk. <laughs> you know, he's a drunk, you know. Um, and, and, and my business is, is, is tough. I, I don't want to make no bones about it, it's, it's real tough. Um, and it's not a, a real easy thing to do to practice the principles of this fellowship in all the time. But I try. And it's just like the book says, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not a saint. And, and, and I'll be lying to you if I told you that I was. And, I'm, and I'll be lying to you if I told you that I did everything right and, and I went down and I did all the, you know, all the checks and balances. And, and that's not true. That's not true. The only thing I do is I just try to do it the best as I humanly can. And I just try to give it my best. I give it 100% and I'm there every day doing it one day at a time. And that's the other thing that I take to work with me. I take the concept of one day at a time. You know, I go to work and, and I say that, you know, if I'm giving my employer a hundred percent, a whole day's work, then I respect a day's pay. You know, if I go in there and I'm on time and I'm doing everything that I humanly possibly can do to do my job, and if I'm not just, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not just sitting around, I, I know guys, I, it, you know, guys are hired. They come to work and they sit around all day, you know, and they're waiting on the up to come in or, or they wait. And I'm saying, well, you know, are, are you giving it your all? You know, are you giving it 100%? You know, are you on the phone? Are you doing, are you following up? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Some of these guys, they do it, and some of them, they don't do it. Those that do it, they are successful. Those that don't do it, then I'll see you later. You know, and, and it's a tough thing um, to tell a guy, Says, well, you know, you're not doing your job. Uh, I've probably been fired in more dealerships than anybody, <laughs> anybody in these rooms there, you know. But that's just the nature of my business. Uh, another thing is, is that I, I don't have no resentments about it. Um, I know that as long as, if, if I can honestly look my, myself in the mirror and say, well, Doc, have you gave it your best? Have you done your all? And if the answer is yes, then I don't have no remorse about it. I don't have no, no resentment about it. Uh, what I do is I help people to solve problems. And, 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 and the result of that is, is, is the money and all those other things that come along with it, you know. And it just so happened that I'm in a business that have a, that, that produces a lot of money and, and guys make a lot of money. And so people think that, that, uh, uh, that we have to do something underhandedly to get it. And that's not necessarily true. Um, a lot of times I have employers when I when I talk to uh, dealers, and and I've been I've been as far as I've been all over this country in, in various car dealerships from North Dakota to uh, uh, North Carolina, uh, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi. I mean I've been in and out of a lot of stores throughout the country, and and I see how these particular businesses are operated and, and that are run. And yeah, there are some unscrupulous people. But most of the part, people are pretty much honest. 
And I try to be honest as well because the, the, the thing about it is people just don't want to be dishonest. Uh, I was talking to my wife about this deal and uh, uh, about this talk here. And I said, well, honey, you know, what, what do you think I ought to say? And she, and she says, well, you know, the most, the most important spiritual principle is humility. You know, in working in the workplace and in working with a boss, one has to, um, to be humble. Because he realizes that, yeah, this guy, is, yeah, you're producing a service for him. You're working for him. You're, you're producing a service, but, but you have a job to do, and he has a job to do. Okay, and you two are coming together trying to make the whole picture work and, and, and to have an a even exchange because you pay you. If you're an hourly worker, if you go to work eight hours, work eight hours. You know, I know people who sit back and, 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 and you know, they go to work and, and then they go to the coffee machine and then they'll stay there 30, 40 minutes and then they'll go back to their desk and then they get on the... Then they get on the computer and they play Nintendo for 50 to 75 minutes a day. You know, you know, the next thing you know, oh, shoot, it's time to go to lunch. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, is, is that the behavior that a recovering alcoholic needs to have? I don't know. You know, I mean, yeah, I do know, but, <laughs> but, you know, is, is that what we want to do? Is that what the Phelps program of Alcoholics Anonymous teaches? I don't think so. You know, this program taught me is that when I go to work, I give a guy a whole day's work, and, and if I'm lucky, I get a whole day's pay. And it's not for me. The only thing I have to do is to just to do my part. If me doing my part, and if I'm doing everything on my end, if my side of the street is clean, then his side of the street should come clean. You know? And if win, lose, or draw, the bottom line is that when I look myself in the mirror, I can say, you did okay. You did okay. Um, the other thing is, uh, um, my, I have an ego. I'm in a business that that calls for a lot of ego, okay. And and because it's a it's a powerful business, okay. It's, it's a lot of power. And I was talking to uh, somebody else out here today this, this morning, and and they was telling me about uh, the power that that we have in this business. Um, and, and it's just how it messes with your psyche. You know, it, you, you're in a place 14 hours a day, and, and, you, and you're controlling everything about it. Everybody there are coming to you for answers. Every, every deal made, every move made in the store, people are coming to you for answers. Now, that's power. And what do you do with it? You know, how, how do you, you, you create this and, and, and make it some pure substance? something good. Well, the only way that I know is by using this program. And I do believe that you can take this program anywhere you want to go. And I believe that, that it will take you to where you want to go. It just depends about how much you are willing to use it. You know? And and the other part about it is, is that you just can't use bits and pieces of it. You know? It, it, is, it, is, it is more like the recovery and being in recovery and, and just using it just to not to drink. You're doing the same thing. You know, you're doing the same thing. Uh, you're being responsible. Uh, you know, you, you have a sponsor. You know, your, your employer. And, 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 and another thing that's more importantly too that I want to add is that, uh, the tradition. You gotta bring the traditions in. You know, I, I ask myself sometimes, what's my primary purpose? You know, what's my primary purpose for going to work? Is it just to make some money? You know, i got to look at all the things that a job do for me. Because it does a lot of things for me. It helps my self-esteem. You know, because when I'm not working, I feel like a bum. You know, it, what a job does for me, it, it, it makes me feel as though that I'm important. I'm giving back to the community because, because not only they're, because of what I do, it creates a lot of other jobs for a lot of other people to do, all right? So I had to look at the bigger picture of what I do. And it really doesn't matter. You know, I, I relate to being a car salesman because that's what I do. But it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a restaurant owner. It doesn't matter if you're a carpenter. It doesn't matter if, if you're a cook. It doesn't matter if you're an airline pilot, a chemist, a lawyer, a judge, a doctor. It really don't matter. 
Because if you apply those same principles into whatever the, the, the field of employment, your field of endeavor is, it'll work for you. But it's just like everything else here. It's not going to work for you until you do what? Use some action. You must apply some action. And you must go out and do it. Um, you know, this is a pretty hard little, little, little talk because I think this is one of the first times that, that we did you know, this committee have decided to do uh, this kind of this kind of deal, and and one of the things we wanted to do is to bring about some substance to you know you know so when we leave here and we go back home we'll have something that that we can that we can take uh, not only in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous but also take it back in the workplace you know um, my wife, I, I called my wife the other day, and and and, uh, and I says, you know, I says, you know those little uh, postage papers? I says, you know, I need some. And she says, okay, I'll stop by Home Depot and pick up some. And I'm saying to myself, I said, gosh, you know, look what she did to me. You know, I used to go to work, and I'd bring, those, bring a pack of postage paper home. You know, I'm kind of stealing them. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I go to work and I get a pack of uh, box of ink pens, right? You know, that my employer has paid for, and, and not only my employer has paid for them, but the cost of the business, which the way that I get paid is by reducing the cost, and if the bottom line is low, all right, then I get paid more, okay? So, therefore, what am I doing? You know, being aware of, of, of these types of, of, of activities are, are, are essential, and I think that they are essential to the alcoholic soul. I think that, that not only this, they're so essential to our character and, and to how we, we are viewed by other people. You know, um, needless to say, uh, I went to Home Depot and I bought some. Uh, last but not least, uh, I, uh, I just recently uh, got catapulted into the ranks of unemployment, and uh, what I decided to do was was that I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, so I decided that I was to start my own business. Okay, and and in working in the work field, um, a thing cropped up, and this is thing of fear. And, and this phenomenal fear came over me. Now, I've been doing this business for 20 years. You know, I, I mean, there's nothing about a car lot, a car dealership that I don't know, and that I haven't done at one time or another. But all of a sudden, this deal of fear come over me, right? And I ask myself, what are you doing? Why? You know, I get up in the morning, and I'm at work at 8 o'clock. That's when I start working. Although, I work in my office in the house. And I go downstairs and I cut my computer on and I cut my fax machine on and I start doing what I have to do. And I give it, and, and one of the things of it is, is that uh, I told myself that I was going to work eight hours a day. And I worked eight hours a day. I told myself that I was going to give everything that I would give to, to, to somebody else, I would apply those same principles, just like I was going punching the clock in, I was going to do the same thing. Okay. Now, has it worked? Well, more will, you know, just keep coming back, more will be revealed. <laughs> All right. You know, but, but I believe, see, I believe that it can and I believe that it will. And the reason why I believe that it can and that I believe that it will is because of the evidence and the things that I've seen in these rooms. And what I'm, and the point that I'm trying to bring to you, the point that I'm trying to bring across the table right now is, is, is mainly that working on the work on the job is no different than being just a regular, unemployed, or, 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 or person. That's in recovery. Because if you're in recovery 100%, you're going you're gonna to transition that to everything that you do. You know, uh, Sean, Sean gave us some, some excellent examples about things in the book book and, 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 and pointed those things out to us that, uh, um, that we can reference to. You know, and a whole, a whole, everything that we do is spiritually based. 
So why can't it be spiritually based in the workplace? Well, why can't we transfer these same principles into the workplace? Because we get them in the promises. You know, in the promises, it's talking about we'll know a new happiness. You know, I used to go to work pit, but but now I have a new happiness. And I and 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 the other deal about it is is that it's a whole new joy, because now it it it, it has a different meaning. Just a whole transition. Um, I just lost it. My train of thought. <laughs> I had it all worked out, man. I just, it just went blank, man. <laughs> yes, it is. Mine is a terrible thing to waste. Um, the other point, you see, I gotta get my notes now. Uh, the other point that I wanted to bring up to us, ah, uh, principles and personalities. Um, and, our biggest deal is jealousy, envy, and greed. Um, and in the workplace, and I know this this happens. My wife tells me uh, my wife is a supervisor at her job, and she tells me about about her other employees and and how they are very jealous and 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 the, just the office office gossip, you know, you know, just the normal things that we do around. But we don't realize just how disruptive it is in the workplace and, and how defocusing it is. You know, not only does it, does it in, disrupt the whole, the whole, uh, continuity of, of the workplace, but it also defocuses you and it takes you away from what you actually should be doing. And then you get these other things with, 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 uh, uh greed, and uh, and then those other four horsemen, you know, they they come in. You know, a friend of mine is Melvin. You know, he talks about those defects of character. You know, the bust of defects of character. Pull up, hey, you remember me? <laughs> you know, I'm a defect. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> you know, jealousy pops out. But when that happens, what does it do for us? Well, for the alcoholic, I know for me, what it does for me, it it, it takes me out of my spiritual balance. And then when it takes me out of my spiritual balance, now I'm, I'm, I'm not focused and, and it causes me to do things that I'll say that I have to go and make amends for. Okay? It causes me to go do things that I have to make amends for. And, and you know, I'm one, I really don't like to make amends. You know, I'm, you know, I really don't like to tell people that I'm sorry. But I have to. You know, and the reason why is because I allow myself to get spiritually unbalanced for action that took place because I participated in something that I really didn't have no business in. And that takes me back to, to the, to the, uh, traditions. You know, I look at, uh, you know, what's my common purpose, you know? You know, the first tradition tells me that unity is my common goal. You know, not only unity in the workplace, unity with my workers, unity with the other people, with my job, with my boss. You know, and if I apply that kind of principle there of unity, it just seems like that it gets along better. You know, it just gets along, I get along better. You talk about property, prestige, okay? You know, and then you say, well, that's what I work for. I work for property, prestige, and money, and, and, and all that good stuff, right? Right? Well, if if you went to work and you did what you're supposed to do and you practice the principles the way that they're supposed to be practiced, then all those things will come to you anyhow. See, it won't be, you know, it, it'll be kind of like uh, aftermath, you know, or something that, that goes along. You know, that's, that's one of those, those second nature things. It's one of those things that just happened, you know, because of. It wasn't the primary focus because when I... Focus on that primarily. Again, I'm spiritually unbalanced. Last but not least, I have plenty of time. Oh my God! <laughs> Don't tell me that. That's the worst thing to tell a drug. You got plenty of time. <laughs> 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 the 
Oh, okay. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, um, just, just in the whole atmosphere of, of the employer, um, you will have different, different things to, to come up that, uh, um, that causes a lot of dissension. And, and my whole point is, is that, is that a viable deal? Some of us may say, well, well, you know, well, why do I want to make this job such a humongous, such, such a, a, a unified and, and such a nice place because it's not supposed to be that way? Well, that's the place that most of us spend most of our time at. You know, most of us spend, you know, eight hours plus, you know, if you're like me, you're 14, 15 hours plus on the job. You know, so if I'm going to be there that long, why not make it a, a, a real pleasant little place to be? Um, did I mention my primary purpose? I mentioned my primary purpose. Okay. Well, I think that's about it. That's all I got. Sean? We want to try to break up into, uh, anybody else got any, anything they want to say about the, uh, Sean, you want to address any of that? Um, I, I think that's a really good point. The, the second comment made, Jim, we'll come back to you. Um, I think with alcoholics, we have a tendency to, uh, I know with me, that in this growth, I've had a real hard time identifying who I am and genuinely developing a sense of humility and self-esteem. Um, I know when I, when I started this last endeavor that I went down there and especially I was working with my father. Um, he's actually a silent partner of mine, and he's in the construction business. So we were finishing the, the, the actual construction of the restaurant, and I was still uh, three and a half years sober uh, trying to gain his approval and get my self-esteem through him. Because at that point in time, he was somewhat of my boss. So I was working 100 hours a week before we opened up, day and night, like like a madman. Um, my meetings, I, I got lax in my meetings. I got too little sleep. I was hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Then I went into the opening of the business. And again, I had to prove myself to, to whoever that may be. And I worked another 100 hours a week for, for another three months until I ran myself physically, spiritually, and emotionally ragged. Um, I felt like at the time that's what I needed to do to be okay. And it took me being sober and the wheels rolling off and getting to to an emotional and physical low in sobriety at four years sober uh, with all these wonderful extraneous things going on about me, a successful business, being young, and being miserable, sober, and and. By the grace of not, by the grace of God, not getting drunk because I did nothing to take care of the the, the malady that I have. Um, for me to realize, I had to be okay with me because the only person I'm truly accountable today is, is me, and that's true on a spiritual level, but also because I am my own employer now. And and if I wanted to, I could work 20 hours a week. I've got people that I've now trained that are competent to to run. The business. Uh, that's not okay with me. What's also not okay with me is it's not okay for me to work 80 hours a week anymore either because I neglect my, my spiritual sobriety. Um, I don't get to meetings enough. I'm, not, I'm too tired when I go to meetings. I don't spend enough time with my friends, my wife, and, and therefore that's not okay either. I found a, a middle area, 50, 60 hours a week that for me I feel okay with. Um, so I'm not sure if that in any way helped you, but ultimately I had to find where, where I was okay um, and begin to truly develop some self-esteem and some, some humility, knowing where I fit in in God's world. As far as uh, dealing with authority figures and, and, and dealing with people, not seeing other people practicing the principles, I can totally relate to that because... I'm the only person, no, now I've hired one other person that's in the program, and I have anywhere between 25 to 40 employees at any given time. And uh, due to the industry I'm in, and, and Doc possibly also, um, alcoholism and drug use is very high. 
-hmm. very high. Um, and it's been very challenging trying to to talk to these people and then to use these principles and for them to get it. And and at times I've had to uh, to break away and, and use different tactics. Um, I like to be soft spoken. I like to try to talk with the people and communicate with them. And try to you know be empathic and you know know that I'm trying to understand where they're coming from. And and ultimately, at times, without uh, publicly humiliating them or without um, doing anything to to embarrass them, I've had to to try to keep the principles, but elevate the tone to try to to explain to them uh, in a very passionate way, you know, my principles. <laughs> and sometimes that's necessary. Um, but the key is, I have to do it within the realm that it's okay with me. Was I honest with this person? Was I, did I practice integrity? Was I true to, to thyself? And, um, and another thing that I struggle with, and I struggled with it on the employee side and the employer side, is, um, is, is sometimes being too passive, too passive aggressive. Because ultimately as an alcoholic and as a sober alcoholic, I still have a problem wanting people to like me. And, um, Sometimes I'll just put up with stuff, put up with stuff, put up with stuff to the point that I'm really resenting either my employer or my employee to the point where I just can't stand them anymore. And and that's that's right there. I'm, I'm not practicing the, the, really the spiritual principle of being honest. I'm not dealing with it with myself, saying, okay, this behavior out of them is bothering me, and uh, I'm practice, practicing avoidance. And instead of going to them and saying, hey, let's talk about this. You know, we have we have rules here, you know, you're supposed to be here at 10 o'clock in the morning, not 10.15. Come in whistling at 10.15 every morning, and why is that? Instead of just letting it go on and on. Um, I, um, I've been, I've had a history of being defiant myself, and, and, and I think that's just the holics. And, and for me, it's, it's a pride thing. It ended up back to me not thinking the rules apply to me, but, but in fact, the rules do apply to me, and if I'm working for someone, um, I need to do what they expect out of me if it's within reason. And if they're, and this is my belief, that if they're lacking the integrity or not practicing principles in, in their affairs, and it's to the point that it makes me that uncomfortable, then I need to, you know, I do the serenity prayer. If I, you know, I can't change it, you know, you have the wisdom to know what I can change or what I, what kind of, I accept. So um, it, it's it's a tough situation. It's um, it's very challenging to to do this in the workplace, but it is possible. Um, and like Doc said, you know, our household and our, and our work that that consists of about ninety percent of our, our life. I guess we you know we do some sleeping as well. But as far as our you know actually being conscious and awake, you know, those are two most important things. And um, I know for me that. Um, if, if I practice vigilance and, and these principles, and, and really, it has to be vigilant on a daily basis. I've got to be honest with myself. I've got to, you know, I've got to try to be humble. I've got to practice the, the integrity and not let these resentments or this um, passive aggressiveness build up and uh, and to deal with things promptly, like we talked about the 10th step. Yeah. I, uh, um, balance. You know, I remember... 12 hours on the car lot. As soon as you leave the car lot, it come up. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to leave. You just want to be there. But I had to get meetings. So what I had to do was I had to figure out how can I work my program and work too. So I just made me a little schedule. And I says, well, okay. I'm going to take, I'm going to go to this noon meeting. And I started going to this noon meeting every day. And, and that's why I got my meeting in. And then I would go back to work after it was over with. It was just that simple. That's where I took lunch at. And, and I had to start realizing that it was more, it was just more important for me to take care of me than for me to take care of this job. Because if I didn't take care of me, I wasn't going to have the job. And that's where the importance lies for me. Uh, as far as the things of my integrity, you know, and, and, my business is my business, and, and, and what somebody else do is somebody else's business. And I try to keep, you know, again, I'm back in traditions. You know, I got to keep the focus on me. 
You know, it's not so much about what you do at work or what you do or, or, or if you come in late. I need to be on time. I need to be there and give 100%. And, and I need to practice some tolerance. I need to practice patience. And I need to practice, uh, humility. You know, um, again, just because I'm an alcoholic doesn't necessarily mean that I gotta be a floor man. You know, I don't have to allow people to walk on me. Uh, I do have choice. You know, this program, y'all gave me the choice. You gave me a, a, a new freedom. You know, and this new freedom deals with the fact that, that, that I could choose just how much of stuff I want to take and how much of stuff I don't have to take. You know, again, if I got my side of the street clean, then that's all I'm really responsible for. And if the other parties don't come clean, well, then they just don't come clean. Now, I have to make a choice of whether or not I want to deal with them or continue to deal with them or not. It's, you know, and, and it's based on what, what's really going on. Rules and fractions, every, every business I know have some type of rules and they have some type of organizational plan and, 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 and I, and I get my manual and I read it and I understand where the, where the line go. And because there's nobody, no business that I know of that, uh, that require you to do something immoral or illegal. Somebody back here. You know, uh, one thing that I I do is is that in my own personal anonymity, there is enough. You know, I I mean, I'm 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 real comfortable with who I am, and I'm a drunk. I'm an alcoholic. You know, I'm a drug addict, and I don't mind telling you that. And uh, um, I've I've been in a lot of situations where there's a lot of partying and 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 you know and a lot of other booze is being served and. And what have you. And I just tell people. I just look. I don't drink. And that's my choice. It's not, you know, and, and the fellowship. I don't use the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. What I use is that I am recovering and that's it. I just had all my drink up. You know, I just drunk all my portion up. You know, in life you only get so much to drink. And I just use all mine up before time. Okay. You know, and, and, and the other part about it is, is that my comfortability level is, is that I really don't care what you think about it. You know, I really don't. And, uh, if you got a problem with it, then, then you need to take it wherever you go with whatever problems you have, because I'm okay with it. You know, and, and, and especially around in the workplace, you know. Um, I don't wear this program necessarily too tight. But I don't wear it necessarily too loose either, uh, because it's a serious thing and, and my life is, is, is a part of it and, and I'm a part of it, you know. And this is where I'm going to spend most of my time at in the workplace, so, so I think that the people that I work with need to know who I am. Uh, I've had people, uh, I work for people that, uh, uh, one store owner that I work for and, and he was in recovery, you know, and, uh, um, and the reason why I know, because I told him that I was, and then he finally, one day, he decided to be my buddy, and, and we were sharing uh, experience, strength, and hope, you know. Because in my industry, you, it was a lot of, a lot of drugs, and a lot of alcohol, and, and a lot of party, and a lot of stuff. But, and I have to look at it as that there's not any special deals. Just because I work for an alcoholic, and I am an alcoholic, should I expect a special deal? Should I expect a special privilege? You know, am, am I, you know, who, who pimping who? Am I pimping AA or, you know, what's really going on here? You, you know what I'm saying? What's really going on here? So, so that's what, you know, uh, that's, that's all I got to say about it. I, I, I really appreciate, uh, all of you all comments and all the help in making this workshop successful. I think we did think we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish and uh, uh, hopefully uh, the committee will see it necessary to do this kind of workshop again because I see that there is a lot of interest and, and there is some, some very good response. Sean, you want right. to? Yeah, Thank you.
Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.